Welcome back. Today we're going to cover how to model and interpret interaction effects, that is, relationships that violate the additivity assumption of the general linear model because of what's called non-independence. In descriptive terms, the relationship of one independent variable and the dependent variable differs by value or category of another independent variable. In causal terms, which you should understand well, but also be cautious using yourself, the effects of x1 on y varies between groups or across values of a third variable. If you're not familiar with it, the term third variable doesn't always mean the second x variable in a model. It can refer to any variable outside the focal relationship, that is the one you're most interested in, that's included in the model. So for example, students who study and students who get adequate sleep are both likely to score higher on statistic tests. So far, we would model these as independent effects with the equation score equals b0 plus b1 study plus b2 sleep. We could graph the model with separate lines for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 hours of sleep, and the lines would all be parallel, that is, they'd have the same slope or coefficient for the study. Each additional hour of sleep would add or subtract the same value from the predicted score regardless of the quantity of sleep, that is, Getting two hours of sleep instead of one is the same as getting eight hours of sleep instead of seven. And regardless of the quantity of study, that is, sleep has the same effect regardless of how much you study. But sleep is unlikely to have any effect in real life on scores for people who are truly unprepared and studied little, if at all. If that's true, the model with independent effects will fit the data or the underlying reality poorly. Interactions allow us to loosen that restriction so that relationships of one x variable with y are able to be different across values of another variable. So how do we work the magic? Well, it depends on the measurement level of the variables, which I'm sure no one saw coming. Let's start with the simplest case. Two binary independent predictors predicting an interval level measure like it. We already know how to interpret the basic non-interactive version of the equation for exclusively categorical predictors. The constant represents the predicted group mean for cases in the omitted category on every variable. If our variables are coded so female and non-white, both equal one, then the constant would be the predicted income for a white male, if those are our only independent variables. If we want to know the predicted income for a white female, we would add the female coefficient to the constant. For black male, we do the same, but with the race coefficient. For a non-white female, we would add both to the constant. Including an interaction of categorical variables allows effects to vary across groups. And to do that, all we need to do is create enough new variables called interaction terms to combine every variable in the original equation. You need 1 minus the number of categories in one variable times 1 minus the number of categories in the other. Here, since both are binary, we only need to add one interaction variable called female by non-white. The new variable is the product of the two existing variables, and since both are dummy variables, it will be 1 for a non-white female and 0 for every other group. So it also will be a dummy variable. What this does to our interpretation is really pretty clever but it may take some thinking to really understand. Let's start with our observations about group means or predicted values again, but this time adding in an interaction. A white male will still be zero on all three variables, thus rolled into the constant. Like before, a white female is predicted to have B0 plus B female income, and a non-white male to have B0 plus B non-white income. But now, instead of a non-white female having B0 plus B female plus B non-white, there's one more coefficient that's added, the female by non-white interaction. So in sum, you would have for a non-white female, B0 plus B female plus B non-white plus B female non-white. When you add more categories like this, uh, when you add more categories to your original variables, you'll need more dummy variables and more interaction variables, but the process is essentially identical. 
a trick to interpreting it, like any regression coefficient, is to start trying out different values of the independent variables. See what y values they predict, and consider the interpretation. So imagine our final equation was income equals 10,000 minus 1,000 times female, minus 500 times non-white, minus 1,000 times female non-white. We would interpret this as follows. The predicted income for a white male is 10,000, a constant. For a white female, it's lower by 1,000, the coefficient for female, or approximately $9,000. For a non-white male, it's lower than the constant by 500, the coefficient for non-white, so $9,500. But for non-white females, the gender gap is double that for whites, compounding systemic inequality of gender and race. So specifically in our equation, non-white women are predicted to earn on average 1,000, that's the coefficient for female, plus 500, the coefficient for non-white, plus 1,000, the interaction term, or $2,500 less than their white male counterparts. And just remember this one thing to help. If you're unsure how to interpret something, choose some values for each variable and see what happens. By changing just one at a time, Make sure to also change the interaction when necessary, though. You can visualize the effects of the coefficients depending on the interaction. If one of the variables you want to interact is interval level rather than categorical, you can still use the same method of multiplying the two variables and adding them to the equation. The new variable will be equal to the interval level variable if the dummy variable is yes and zero otherwise. Before, when both variables were categorical, the interaction could be interpreted easily either way. The effect of A differs across categories of B, or the effect of B differs across categories of A. Now, because the interaction variable can take a variety of values, it's easiest to only interpret in terms of the relationship of the interval variable with Y, varying across categories. That is, it's easier now to say if we were using, say, happiness and sex to predict income, it's easier to say, if those are interacted, the effect of happiness on income differs by sex. We won't cover here how to interact interval or ordinal variables with each other. It is possible, but the calculation and the interpretation are less straightforward. Also, we're most often interested in differences in effects across categories rather than across values because they're inherently discontinuous and often they make theoretical sense. So before we finish, a couple other technical notes. First, make sure not to leave out the original categories. If you interact sex and race, you need to have main effects terms for sex by itself and race by itself plus the interaction term or else the interaction will mean something very different. Second, it's common practice to use force entry to estimate a model with only main effects before then adding interactions. That way you can see how much, including the interactions, may have improved our fit, and thus the importance of the interaction for not viol violating assumptions. Third, if you run an equation with an interaction term and suddenly your main effect's not significant, that doesn't mean that variable doesn't matter. In fact, we rarely interpret the significance of the main effect by itself. If either the main effect or the interaction effect is significance, we talk about the total effect of that variable. So don't worry about that. Uh, it's an artifact of how you're defining things. So to recap, sometimes the relationship of one variable with y differs between categories of another variable. Not that two x variables are necessarily correlated with each other, coefficient for one is different when split by categories of the other. To test for an interaction effect in regression, create a new variable by multiplying the variables together, and then include both the main and interaction terms in your equation. The interpretation of an interaction effect is something like each unit increase in x1 is associated with a v1 unit change in y. For cases in the omitted category, and the association is stronger, weaker, or opposite based on, and you make that determination based on the coefficient of the interaction.
for cases in the non-omitted category. Again, each unit increase in X1 is associated with a B1 unit change in Y for people in the omitted category. And the interaction term tells us whether it's stronger, weaker, or even non-existent or opposite for cases in the non-omitted category. Finally, it frequently helps to graph y for values of x1 and x2, including the interaction effect, or to just try sample values to see the importance and meaning of the effect. Interactions are one of the most powerful and most often misinterpreted tools in the regression toolbox, and you'll see them in many published articles. Hopefully now you have a sense of the why and the how, and you can understand them when you see them, and maybe even use them. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.